Hello YouTube, I am Michael from RuneStorm and today we're going to be doing a paint job of a miniature that I have received called the Gelatinous Cube from Nolzar's Fungalist Miniatures one of my favourite monsters from D&D so we're going to paint this up see what it comes out like but I'm just going to show you now the paints I'm going to use for this so we have Mummy Robes here by Warp Army Painter have Flesh Wash, which is a wash by Army Painter as well. Plate Mail Metal by Army Painter. And the main one we'll be using, which will be this Blue Tone Ink from Army Painter for all the whole gelatinous cube. And some non oil as well, just to shade things up. So with that, we'll get on to this and we'll see what it looks like. And we'll see where we're going to start with this. Okay, so now I've just opened this up and I've come to have a look at this. And you can see here, this has got a bunch of details right here. Let's see, we've got bones, weapons, a shield even. That'll be fun. The, the miniature can sit inside. And we have the main gelatinous cube itself. Which will be mainly just covered in the wash and then of course the base so that's what we get into with all of this in the packet so i think we'll start off with the blue tone ink here to start it off with because i want to give it a nice blue tint but i'm gonna have to water this down just a bit because i feel like it's going to be too strong over the whole thing Okay, now I've just added a touch of water to my ink, and right now we're just going to go on here, and we're just going to get in these gaps here. It's giving it a little bit of a coat over all this area. Don't worry about it too much. If it goes over your shields and your bones, the basic idea we're just trying to tint this, and going over these isn't going to be too much of a problem because we can always paint up the bones in that after, this is always why it's a good idea when you've got something that's one colour hugely over the whole thing to do that main colour first get a little bit of hair on the base so it may be a little bit hard to see but it is just slightly tinting it because we don't want to go too, uh, myself I don't want to go too hard on the colour but just to bring out a lot of that detail okay so now while we've got that one there drying it's all finished up just waiting for it to dry just keeping an eye on those pooling areas just like that we're going to move on to the main part of the gelatinous cube the cube part so just grab some more ink grab a bit wider brush this time so I can cover a bit more area a bit quicker and I'm just going to start with the top first. I'm just going to be doing some quick strokes on it, just enough to give that same effect. So, it takes a little while to see. It starts running all over the place. But I'm not sure how well it's showing up on camera at the moment. But it is staining it. It's giving that nice blue effect. I only want it to be subtle. I don't want it to be big blue thing that's um, painted fully in so you can't see the detail on the inside. So I just, just keeping that in mind while I'm going over it. Just quick strokes. A bit of water. I'm not diluting it too much, but just, just enough to make it flow a little bit easier. Now, unlike the other one, uh, that is the inside piece, I'm not going to paint the inside of this, so I don't have too much of that colour showing through. I... Okay. So now that all this is dry and look quite good, you can see it right there. It's not too obscured, 
but it does obscure a lot of this little detail here. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint all these little skeletons and just bits in here, um, all painted up, so it pops out just a little bit more, making it a little bit nicer. So I'm going to start off with all these little skeletons first. So for that, I'm just doing all the little skeletons I can see in the mummy robes color. So it's just an off-white. It's not a pure white, although you could do it a pure white if you wanted to. But just enough to bring them back out. And as you can see, even just that one that makes it pop. Okay, so now we've got all them painted up, all those little skeletons are looking nice and bright there. I'm going to paint the weapons that are also in this. So for that, I'm just going to be using the plate male metal that we grabbed. And I'm just going to be picking out the weapons that are in here. Now, it's up to you. As well also if you want to do this or not but just like our skeletons that we did just add a whole heap of detail to it Okay, and now we have all those weapons nice and done. We're now going to be moving on to giving our skeletons our flesh wash, which is the army paint of flesh wash. We don't want too much of this, but just enough to sort of make it look like it's still got some skin, or even just poke out those eyes a little bit. Just adding a bunch of depth to it. Uh, you may not want to do this, but for me, I feel like it gives it like it's really eaten all that flesh away. It's still slightly dissolving everything in acid. Okay, so now we're going to add another quick small detail that will really bring to life some more, just like with adding our flesh wash onto our skeletons. I'm just going to grab a little bit of known oil here from um, Citadel. And we're just going to go over the weapons just to 
And what that'll do is it'll just bring some of that brightness down a bit, as well as bring out all the detail that we've got around it. Another place that would be really good to do this will be on the shield. Just to make it look like it's been in there a little while and really bring out those definitions we've got on there. Like that is really making that shield pop there. Also, I want to just go over this axe. Okay, so now we've got all them nice and dry. We can see now that we have a nice variation between these ones here with the known oil and these ones with the flesh on it. Maybe a little bit hard to tell, but some some of them it may just look a little bit like white, but bring a little bit closer. Looks like there's a bit of flesh in there. That's really brought out that shield nice. But all those nice little details. So now, all we have to do, glue it to our base, and we'll just have to go check it out. So, let's glue it to the base. Nice, nice bit of super glue here. Really hold it down. It's what I use for basing all my matches. To really keep a hold, but it's, I mean, it's totally up to you. You could use. PVA glue will also hold as well, but it just takes a little bit too long to dry for me. Alright, now I've gone on the edge. Get that nice and centralized. And now with all that done, our gelatinous cube is finally finished. You can see it here looking real nice with all those washes and then just adding that detail there. And then you've got the main gelatinous cube part itself where you can place over miniatures. And I'll just demonstrate that for you right here. So you can fit just, uh, here we go, we've got a dwarf here. You can place it inside, put the main part on top and voila, you have a gelatinous cube that's devoured someone. So I'd like you to stick around just to the end of the video just a little bit just to see it on a scenario. But other than that guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching my video and I hope to see you in the next one.